Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Raider Gaming Tanker.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analyzing some benchmarks for the Ryzen 9 5900X. This is a 12 core, 24 thread processor. Yeah, that's right, I'm doing a video just to focus on these results today because. Quite honestly, I'm still waiting for my internet to be set up, so I'm actually using tethered uh, Wi-Fi for this. So the video needs to be a bit shorter than my normal uh, lengthy videos. But I really wanted to discuss this because I'm just so damn excited. Uh, also, apologies for any echo in the background. I've just moved, so I'm setting up audio equipment and stuff like that. So it's not quite how I'd like it at the moment, he says, looking at tons of boxes which are yet to be unpacked. Um... So anyway, getting back to the point, the 5900X is absolutely bonkers. It is crazy. Um, Zen, the 5900X is, of course, powered by the Zen Free architecture, but it's still 12 cores, 24 threads, so it retains that over the predecessor, which is the uh, 3900X. But... The thing that is mad to me is that the performance is so high compared to it. We're looking at around 15% improvement in multi-thread performance, and the single-core performance, or single-thread performance, should I say, is 25% improved. And again, this is just monstrous. This result has actually been leaked um, by a chap on Twitter, 9550Pro. So full credit to him for these discoveries. So if we look at the performance of uh, this particular processor, you can see that we are looking at 9481. Uh, this is for CPU-Z. So yes, it's not indicative of every single benchmark in history of humanity, but it does give us a fairly decent understanding of how this processor stands compared to its predecessor. In this particular image, you can see that the 3700X is being compared, and obviously the 3700X does not have 12 cores, so multi-threading performance is definitely way faster on this new CPU, but the key here is also the single thread performance. Notice about 511, which is typical for a 3700X, you know, depending on precision boost settings and a trillion other things and memory timings, that type of stuff. Normally, the low 500s is roughly what you could expect for a 3700X. I think I score like 520 or something like that on my setup. Um, but compare that to the basically uh, 653 points of this new processor, well, I'm sure you'll agree that there's absolutely no comparison at all. So this is through a combination of factors. One is the higher clock frequency. We've recently learnt, of course, that these CPUs are going to hit around 5 gigahertz. That has been uh, leaked by a, a couple of people now and also a YouTuber. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name offhand. I don't have access to my notes uh, in this particular particular instance, but um, they leaked it, but we've also seen engineering samples as well, which uh, did put us at 4.9 gigahertz, so honestly 5 gigahertz is pretty much a certain for the final retail samples. Again, we are looking at a 15-ish percent gain in integer performance. I've personally seen documentation which does confirm this, and well, yeah, if you throw all of that stuff together, plus AMD's own mentions multiple times, not only in the leaked documents that I've seen, but furthermore, um, just AMD's own wording of the Zen-free architecture that they're going to be focusing on single-core performance, and the other architecture changes that we know about, like the uniform, uh, sorry, unified CCX design, CCZ slash CCX design, I don't think it's surprising that we are looking at this, and honestly these results are about in line with what I expected. Um, I can't say anything other than these things are going to sell very well. I'm assuming that they won't price gouge, so, you know, they won't add, like, 30 50% or something like that markup for the Zen 3 architecture. That is AMD, not retailers. Um, so assuming that we are looking at similar pricing... 
I I honestly don't um, imagine anyone is going to purchase an Intel CPU for gaming because I just don't see how Intel are going to win against these CPUs for gaming even. Uh, because what's even crazier about these results is this is not the first time we've seen leaked benchmarks, of course. And uh, recently I covered Ashes of the Singularity, which again was absolutely monstrous for the 5000 series, the Zen 3 architecture. I wouldn't be surprised if in some applications Intel do hold their own. Um, and again, I would be interested in titles which typically do really well on Intel's architectures for whatever reason, such as the infamous CSGO. But um, let's face it, even with an RTX 3080, I'm actually waiting for my Founders Edition card, which should hopefully arrive tomorrow. I'm currently testing the 3080 from MSI, as you probably know. By the way, you should check out one of my really fun videos recently. I was chasing the Port Royal scores, and I, I did pretty well, actually. I'm pretty happy with myself, given that I'm certainly not a hardcore overclocker. So if you're interested in a kind of impromptu fun video, you should je definitely check that one out. Um, I'll try to remember to link it in the description. But long story short, given what we know about these CPUs, it's very difficult to imagine, even with an RTX 3080, um, and even assuming that you're playing at a more modest resolution for a, for a 3080, such as 1440p, it's very difficult to imagine that we're going to look at any scenario at all where there's going to be a tangible difference in performance between the two. In other words, if I was to load up a game like, let's say, Doom Eternal, and I was to not mark which system is which, but both were running an RTX 3080, um, let's take the 3090 out of the equation because it's obviously not really designed around high-end gaming, so let's just use the 3080, and you didn't know which system was which, and all you saw were the frame rates, and maybe you got to play it, you'd be very hard-pressed to tell which system was the Intel CPU and which system was the AMD CPU. Um, the only the only thing for me is that I would be interested if the 10-core Ryzen CPU does exist, because if so, AMD could make a really good marketing point. If I were AMD, if the CPU does exist, which again, it may not, but assuming it does exist, if I were AMD, I would price it incredibly aggressively, and I would I would do anything I could to make sure that that hit 5 gigahertz, because if it did, it would be a really good um, weapon I don't like to use that word again, you know, when technically it's not anything that, uh, you know, astounding, it's only technology, but still, it would be a really good quiver in the, uh, in, in the, in the bow, so to speak, against Intel, um, and the 10900K. Again, I'm interested in seeing what Rocket Lake can do, um, but I'm pretty sure most of us will agree that either way, these CPUs are going to be really impressive. With all of that said, though, thank you very much for watching the video, the normal stuff. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.